Everybody, we're back. <laughs> if you weren't here this morning, this is the Marco Island Center for the Arts and Dillman's Workshop Festival, <laughs> uh, demonstration festival, right? Um, so we couldn't do it this morning at the uh, Mac, uh, Marco Island Arts Center because there are tornadoes in the area and there are a lot of touchdowns. So you'll probably hear that on the news uh, this afternoon or Right, 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 right now. If you look, at, if you look right now on your news station, I um, mean, I think there's still some happening behind me. You can see it's still raining, um, but we were, so instead of doing it at the Marco Arts Center, we decided to keep it going, uh, do the demonstrations, and the, the first one we did this morning, and now we're doing the second one. Uh, this one is going to be acrylics and on black paper, and I'll be talking a, little, a couple other things about that. Uh, but first off, the reason we, uh, again, because of the tornadoes and the storm, we brought it in here and we're at Sue and Denny uh, Robertson's uh, condo in, in Florida, down here near Marco Island. And we, um, they are the owners of Dillman's. Dillman's is up north and we're doing it, we're doing these demonstrations for that. So you can come up there and take classes for pe from people like me. And so here, let me just show you what their website is. So their website is dillmans.com. And um, I'm going to be up there this year, uh, June 12th and the 17th for my water media, which is what we're doing now, the um, water media demonstrations right now. Um, this morning I did the watercolor. And if you're taking my watercolor class, that will be September 18th through the 23rd. And so that's up at Dillman's in Lac du Flambeau, Wisconsin. Super wonderful place to go and uh, get up there and take wonderful classes from a lot of instructors. They have a lot of full top notch instructors who um, teach all from watercolor to pastels to um, mixed media. I've seen them do up there with a rug. I know it, it was a wool. <laughs> it, um, I forgot what that was called. But anyway, anyways, they have a ton, ton of uh, um, classes up there. So go to, our, uh, to their website at dillmans.com. You'll find out exactly what those art instructors are that are scheduled for next year or actually this year <laughs> this year um starting in uh, probably i'm not sure where they're starting but mine's in june 12th to 17th 18th to 23rd for the e uh, F, um, fall one and so let's go back to our tabletop and we'll get started and uh, sorry um that we couldn't do it at there today i know a lot of you may have even gone there um that would have been crazy though because it was really super super windy out here in florida down in marco island it was crazy. I mean, you should have seen how the, be the trees were bending. And I guess it's kind of rare to have um, tornadoes in um, Florida here, but usually they're hurricanes, I, I was thinking. <laughs> but anyways, so th today we're going to do this um, uh, scene. This, after, uh, this morning we did this scene, um, if you were here for that. So that was this scene. And so we're going from that to um, a, a black bear. This is white paper that we did on a Stonehenge Aqua White. And now we're going to be doing on black. And so I have a bunch of other, uh, this is Stonehenge Aqua Black. It's a wa black watercolor paper. And I'm just showing you this because when we do the water media class up at Dillman's, I do all different kinds of papers. And so one of the papers will be on black. And so what I, I show you some of the things, we just did this in the villages. This is one of the um, scenes we did in the villages. These are little ballerinas. And um, I did this at Raleigh, North Carolina as a demonstration. Again, this is watercolor. This is watercolor. This one, though, was acrylic. And you notice that on a lot of my classes, water media or watercolor, they're very close to the same type of class. The only thing with the, um, water, the acrylic class, I bring all the supplies. And because we're using four different kinds of acrylic, four different kinds of papers, and all kinds of different um, subject matter. But uh, here's another one I did. So you get, yeah, get the picture that with the water media, you get a few more um, things with acrylic. The watercolor is basically traditional watercolor. I do it though with some of paints that have white. You know, I use white with my watercolors. And so we float our pigment with our watercolor classes. And we do the same type of imagery, but um, uh, uh, it's, it's fun. So if you're a watercolorist or an acrylic artist, you can take my class either way. And so today we're going to start with the black Stonehenge Aqua 300 pound uh, black watercolor paper. And it's cold press. They make the same thing at the white in black. Uh, so that it's the only thing I think they don't make the 300 pound um, hot press yet. 
but they probably will in a certain time. So what is it about the black and about acrylics that I use differently? Not that much. Um, as, uh, actually, the, the acrylic has taught me to use a little bit more pigment in my work and also the the um, paper, the black paper, makes me think of how to use white in your white paper. It's kind of interesting because you just start getting used to all these different things and they all kind of combine together as one in the end. It's kind of strange how that works. So um, let's see if anybody's back. Oh, hey, Ann, Ann's back. <laughs> I'm hoping nobody had a problem finding it. That's uh, the only thing that there was. Um, I just... I had to program it just today because um, we just we were not going to put it out right away because we we're going to do it at the place and we we're still going to do it through a Zoom slash thing meeting. Um, so uh, we just had to try something different. We just figured we still want to do the demonstrations and so and also if you didn't find it, um, I hope it's later on down the week during the week you can actually find it and watch it at your at your leisure. And also send it to your send it to your friends. Put it on Facebook. Just let people know about us here at Dillman's teaching at Dillman's and and also the uh, Marco Island Art Center Center for the Arts. I think it's called, but um, that's also a great place if you're down here at the island. Um, also, and actually, we just did um, a a fest like this at in the villages. And so we're uh, Dillman's was in the villages also, and so those are online on my YouTube channel. So if you went to my YouTube channel, you also saw those demonstrations that we did last weekend. Now we were going to do another demonstration next weekend for the um, Tampa Bay, uh, Tampa um, work, uh, work. Uh, I forgot their watercolor society or something like that in Tampa, and um, but they're not going to be having it because of the COVID. So we have to. Um, I may though uh, next set. Uh, I'm home. I will, but. I think I'll be driving home at the time, but I'm thinking I still have them all drawn out. So I may do that um, festival um, for them another weekend, just another weekend. Maybe not that weekend because I'll be driving back home. But um, so here, let's go. So with the black, you're basically putting in your lights. And I, I find that it's actually a lot easier to put in your lights than it is to put in your darks. So basically, half your painting is done and so usually i do paintings that have a lot of dark in them so if you look at the if you look at the photograph right up here where is that right, this photograph right there that's what we're painting but see how much dark is already in there and just because it's black doesn't mean you have to make it just solid black i can put a color over this by washing it and so i can put a tint of color over it and so the, it's, it's just like the white watercolor paper that it dries 20 percent darker than lighter but so if you put a rinse of wash over this like a um a, just a tint of a wash it will make that black turn to a color of black it could be like a bluish black a reddish black and so what you do on 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 the black paper is you work from dark to light compared to where on the light paper white paper you work from dark to, light to dark I'll be I'll be screwing that up a lot throughout this thing because it's, it's it's just so I'm switching everything that you do in the white paper is flopped over to the to the black paper. And if you never heard of the black paper, it is Stonehenge Aqua by Legion Papers. They make it. It's the Stonehenge Aqua, but it's black. And you can get it at Jerry's Autorama, Blix, um, what other Cheap Joe's. They all have it. They all have it. You can even get it at all those art supply stores, and they have the same. Uh, thicknesses, you got 140, you got 300 pound, you got cold press, hot press. So it's all, it's all there. And the Stonehenge Aqua paper was made anyways to kind of give the artist a little bit um, a premium paper at a, at a good price. It's a little bit cheaper, not cheaper in quality, but cheaper in price for a quality paper. And that, that's what they were shooting, the, their goal was to shoot for. And they, they did a great job because it is a great paper. I love it. That's all I use nowadays. Um, what I did this morning was on the Stonehenge Aqua, and this is on the black. Yeah, I will, um, and as I put the photos on my site, yep, I can do that. So we're going to start out with the darks, and so what we're going to do is I'm going to make some of the darks back here a little bit warmer. Now, I'm not going to do the warmth, totally the warmth yet, but I want to get some of the areas to have some color in them so they're just not black and so i just put a little bit of water down take a little bit of acrylic and i'm using fluid acrylic and heavy bodied acrylic i also have some ink in there and i have some gouache so the heavy bodied and gouache are in the center here 
uh, on the center part in the outer edge right here that is the liquids and fluids though i didn't make a mistake here and i put some of the um heavy body blue in there but that's okay so i'm going to take a little bit of the red fluid and i'm just going to lay it into the uh, wash right here and it looks you can't see anything can you i know because it's just a slight slight difference in um color uh, you can, oh, there you go. Kind of see right there. See, there's just a slight difference. Turn my black into a little bit of a red, you know. So, um, and that's what with this paper, it it's kind of hard to film because you're getting nothing there because it's just water. And it, you, oh, something just dropped over there. So what you're going to do is you're going to get a little bit of a uh, uh, reflection from the lights and stuff. But so I'm going to just put a little bit of that in there, a little bit here maybe in the street because a lot of this like this stuff the center here i'm going to do that all at once then i'm going to put this all together and negative paint around this light here and and you'll see it but so i'm getting the big dark areas done first getting a little bit of color in those big dark areas and i'm using a lot of warm colors here because why this is a sunset and it's streaming down the middle of that street and so i want to get that effect of those super super light lights going right down the middle of the street and this is something you'll be doing at uh, Dillman's when I'm teaching at Dillman's. You, you work on black paper, you work with acrylics, and again, you don't have to bring any supplies when, up, up, there, up there for my water media class. And so we're just going to go like this. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if I'm going to do this. I was talking with them about the um, water class and if I should bring all the supplies. I may have. I've got to look to see if we decided on that or not. I forgot if we decided to bring all the supplies for the watercolor class, too. But most people who are watercolors, they have their own supplies. But a lot of times, if we're all using the same exact thing, I find that to be a lot easier to teach people. They're using all the exact same thing, the exact same paper. you know. Then, and not, anyway, if you would buy all this stuff when you'd come to my class, you'd spend like $500 just for the supplies. So that's what I might bring them. So that way, um, you don't have to do that. We'd never have anybody sign up if we had to buy five hundred dollars worth of supplies. But it's all new stuff and all new stuff. You know, this new black paper, all this new stuff. And it looks really weird. Like, like I'm not painting anything, doesn't it? I mean, there's a little bit of red. I'm just putting red around the areas and stuff. And you can make like blues in there too. But um, so it's, it's basically you're just putting a little bit of color in there. So now I'm gonna go a little bit lighter. Go a little bit lighter. And um, again, the much the more pigment you have, the the, the more lighter it's going to get. Because if I do a wet wash, there's not much pigment. Once it dries, so whatever pigment's left there. So there's a little bit of like a light blue, and I'm putting these in just for, for the windows of the buildings right there. And this dries so much darker. You'll see it dries sometimes even thirty percent darker than it is. Let me put a little of that here. There's a sign over here. And because I do pictures that have a lot of dark in them, it makes it very simple because the, half the painting is done. Like I said before, half the painting is done. Look at, I mean, this, most of this painting, three quarters of this painting is dark. So I'm just putting in the light, light parts and then that'll take one third or one fourth of all the lights is done. You know, that's pretty simple. And also definitely ask questions. I hope some people found it. <laughs> Maybe um, people didn't find it. I know that there's not many people watching now, but um, again, it'll be on there for a good long time. So let your friends know. And we'll just pretend like there's a lot of people on there. <laughs> and then when they do watch it, they'll think they have tons and tons of people have been watching it, which a lot of people will. By the end of the two weeks, there'll be 400 people watching this. So sooner or later, somebody's gonna, they're all going to watch it. They're all going to have fun watching it. See, I'm doing my, 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 um, my areas that are cool and light, but not almost like a middle tone light. Not my lightest lights yet. I'm just putting those in there. It's a, it's a fun concept. I, um, when they brought the paper to me, and asked me to test it and try to see what it's like and how it handles and stuff. I, I thought to myself, well, what the heck? How do you use, you know, watercolor or even acrylics that's like a wash on black paper because it's transparent, especially watercolor, not so much acrylics because I'm not going with thick acrylic first. 
I'm going, I'm, I'm actually working it like it is a watercolor. And so I'm not using it like a, basically like a, um, like watercolor, this acrylic. So now I'm going to go and get some of the little stuff already because I'm ready already at light stage where I don't have to worry about the big area of the dark. I'm already to the part where I want to put in getting lighter and lighter and lighter and um, putting little things in because there's not much to put in in this painting, especially because this painting is a lot of little little gems, you know, little light gems that, that just are going to make this painting look so cool. And this ask questions. So that the people who watch it later, because they will not have a chance to ask the question. Though I always say, ask the question, ask the question so that um, I will put it in into the comment section. Because you can still ask questions even afterwards in the comment section below the video. Let's see if we see a question here. Yeah, I added some red to the and purples to the to the dark areas, and then also you can do that later on too. If you find that you know the blacks are too black and they're not colorful enough, you can do that later also. But now let's go right. I'm going to go right into the the light of it. I'm just going to go right here and just shoot my light out. That's the biggest light area. So um, let me do the street first. Let me just get practice here. I was looking for a place where I can practice a little bit of where I wet it. So I wet the surface. And that way I'll get a, a, a soft edge, right? With e watercolor, acrylics, it doesn't matter. If you want a soft edge where you're using it like a tint, and I'm just going to use the white by itself with some yellow in it, maybe a little bit of orange. And I'm just going to go in here and just let it bleed down. And you have to use it pretty thick so that the acrylic covers up some of the black because basically I'm covering up black to make it look, make it look bright. And so, but first thing I want to do is make sure that I get the nice gradation of dark to light. So I'm going to go down here. And how do you get the dark gradation? You take it and make it watery and use the black of the paper instead of the white of the paper. Like, you know, when you leave the white of the paper, well, here I'm going to use the black of the paper and leave it so that that's the dark and it goes into the light area here, gets lighter and lighter. And then, um, and use pure pigment. Sometimes you don't have to use just white at all. You use pure pigment, and there's enough pigment in there that will sit on top of the black. And by the time it dries up, it'll be nice and dark because it's just the pigment that's left. And don't use white sometimes just because you don't need white in certain areas. To And I do use the heavy-bodied stuff because that's thicker. And so I'm going to go up here and make it pretty thick. Going to go around this, this guy right here. There's a guy standing right here going to negative paint him, which is really weird because now I'm negative painting and it becomes dark, where the other way around is usually too dark and negative paint the light. So I'm going to put a line down here. And um, a couple of you asked me last week and also today, they asked me, oh, you use your um, watercolor brushes for this, huh? I go, yes, I definitely use my watercolor brushes. I'm mean, starting as like a watercolor and then I will end it up like an acrylic, but even the thick acrylics, I can use my small brushes or my watercolor brushes to do that. It's not like they're that much different than the long handle. Basically, basically all that's left is the long handle. That's different from the, the short handle ones. The bristles on some of them are the same, you know, depending on what kind of what kind of brushes that you use for your acrylics. I use nylon and that's what these are. These are nylon brushes. Synthetic nylons. Let's put those in there. And if you make a mistake on here, it's very simple to put black back on. That's another nice thing. Like you're always worried about, you know, oh my gosh, I didn't get that right in the first wash or whatever. Who cares? I can just put black, I can put black right back on there. And then it covers it, and black covers up really easily. It covers up everything very easily. So look how it's just starting to bright, brightly shine down the street. And this gives me practice because it's not as hard as doing this this whole area right here. This is going to give me a little bit of a of a lesson to see how I have to handle it. So a lot of times with the painting that you're doing the first time, you may want to do a little study like this before you do a big painting, just so you know how to handle that. And that's to come in, in my classes. We, we're just doing studies. We're not doing full blown out paintings. We're doing um, exercises, as a matter of fact. I would call them exercises because once you call them a, a painting, then everybody tightens up and they have to make them look exactly like some pretty painting. 
No, we aren't doing exercises. We're trying to do things to learn how to use this paper. And, uh, and a quarter sheet is usually a good way of doing that through. You know, you get too big a sheet of paper and that's hard too. I'm just gonna have a light here. See how it just keeps on like, getting darker and darker as I as I go away from it and it dries, it gets it just keeps on like, getting darker and darker. So you just gotta figure out how much paint you gotta use to keep it nice and nice and um light. And so we're gonna move top of these things and you know, let's see if we can get that burst. That's gonna be a hard part. See that the darks are already there. We already do the darks. We don't have to worry about the darks. The darks are are accomplished already. I'm gonna put a couple of little lights in there to see how that since I have red in my thing already, anyways. Put a little red in there. There's not much big things to do in this, and so I'm kind of stalling for doing this white white here. <laughs> Let's see. I, I'm gonna use my rectangular brush, my flat brush, to do this part up here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wet it with white, with um like nice and thick white. I don't need to do much of a gradation up here. And I'm going to, so if you don't need a gradation, just put it on solid. You don't need to float your, even float your pigment because um, I can make it solid and it's not watercolor. So it doesn't have to look like a nice wash. It's just a solid color. I probably should have made it a little bit bluer up there. Now I'm not going to put green in there because that'll turn it terrible. If you want to dull down, um, dull down a yellow, use lavender, a violet. That won't can turn it green. We put a little lavender in there and that'll tone it down a little bit. Tone down your lily with lavender. Hey guys. Hey Barbie. Hey Hope. Hey James. Found you. All right. <laughs> Does gouache make it chalky? Uh, no, 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 no. The white makes it chalky. Uh, people get that kind of confused with gouache. Gouache nowadays, it's not, a, they don't put so much the white in it. The colors, this is gouache. This is acrylic gouache. And this one, this is violet. It's just a very bright color. This is gouache too. This yellow and um, this orange and yellow, that's gouache. So it's not about the white anymore. Uh, the olden days, they used to make gouache. That it's like opaque watercolors. But they've, they've ground the pigment so finely now. And it's a whole different thing. If you were um, using gouache back in the day, it's a lot different now. It is super a lot different. Though when I'm using white in my washes here now at this point, yes, it is a little bit chalkier because you're using white to get the light in there. So, and you're gonna get a lot of grays because you're mixing white on top of black. And what does white and black make? Gray. So yes, you will get a lot of grays and the kind of chalkiness to it. But um, the more and more you use it, the more and more you know how to put it down and not get that and just get pure white or just get pure, uh, black, you know, because black on black too, if you get black on black, it looks really cool. Now this is acrylic. The nice thing about this is it once it's, it's, this dries, it's it's permanent. So I don't have to worry about, oh, put my finger in it. <laughs> it's not dry. Yet, so. <laughs> it was such a nice wash right there too. Look at that. I screwed it up. Ah, oh well. But anyways, once it dries, it's, it's permanent. So uh, it, water doesn't rejuvenate it again. So that's great when it comes to having a great wash that you just put down. And then leaving it. Now, as I go down here, I put a little bit of orange and yellow into it. So I'm gonna get close to the sun. Now, the sun itself, actually, this shouldn't be total white. The only thing that should be total white, now I just think about it, the only thing that should be total white should be the sun itself. All this other stuff should have a color to it. It shouldn't be white because then if I have everything white, then the sun will not be the brightest. And really, right now, the only thing that has to be white is right there. I have to make that part white and everything else should have a little bit of value to it. Uh, even if it's just a little bit of yellow or lavender or whatever you do there, it has to have a color so that the sun, which is the light source, will be the lightest light. Just to let you know. In any painting you do, any painting you do, you try never to, if the sun is in the picture also, if the sun is in the picture, you cannot make that area, the area for the sun, white. Everything else has to have a color, a little bit of something. It could be a really light something, but it has to not, it cannot be white. You got to keep the white for the sun because that has to be the brightest part. And that's how you make it look really bright then too. Here's a little stop sign and stuff. And now I'm going to try to make it lighter and lighter as I go down here, but I'm going to try to keep it not light until I get down here. And then I'm going to take white 
put white right there in the middle and then I'm going to bleed it out from that point on. That's the only white right there. And I'm going to just kind of bleed it out and just get lighter and lighter or darker and darker with a different color. That should be the only white in my whole painting. And some questions if you'd like. And if you have to ask questions about Dillman's or the Marco Island Art Center, please have those out there too. We'll, we'll try to answer them. And for anybody just coming in, um, this is um, the this is going to this is supposed to be the Marco Island um, Art Center Fest demonstration that I do, but this morning they had tornadoes in the area, and so everybody was in lockdown. We pretty much um, didn't want to go out. Nobody wanted to go out, and that's I I wouldn't want anybody to go out. <laughs> and so we, the director Hila at the Art Center, we decided um, all of us decided that be better not to have it there. And then we decided to maybe just to keep it going with these right here, with my workshop. And then we can always post them on. They'll be on, they'll be on Dillman's site, these videos, and they'll be on um, my Facebook page. I'll put them on there, and then we'll just keep on putting them everywhere. And so now I'm going to start going into my darks here and go more and more orange. And this is scatter, scatter, what do they call it? Optical scatter is um, Carl Bretzky called it optical scatter. It's his term. And what is happening is it's so bright, the sun right here, that it's turning the color of objects to the color of the sun, you know, with the orange and red beaming on here. So you turn it into that color, a lot of orange, basically. It's going to take like pure orange and yellow and then just make these buildings that color because that's what it's going to be. It's what is going to be happening. And I don't have to do it wet, like with a watercolor. I can blend it. And I notice there's there's going to be the L coming across right here. But I'm going to put that in afterwards because this is not watercolor. I'm using acrylic, so I don't have to I don't have to do it wet in the wet. I can do it as a blend. I can blend it into that scene. I can take the white and blend it into here, which is for something like this, it's probably a little bit easier. Or I could also take an airbrush. Uh, which I don't have me with it right at the moment. I can also take an airbrush and airbrush that in there and put it right in there. So there's many different ways of doing this, what I'm doing right now. But one, um, since we're using acrylic, I'm just using it thicker. And I'm going right up here and just going to make it go from a, a white to a yellow to an orange to a red to a black. You know, and then you go in between the black and the red, you can use a purple if you need to do it. You don't want to use blue. Well, blue is fine too. Not sure why I said that. <laughs> so we're going to go here and let's see if I can't get this done in an hour. We are working full sheets, so it's a little bit more difficult than the Thursday nights that we do, the demonstrations that I do. But this fun thing about the black paper and doing this um, optical scatter is that it just looks so bright when you get done. I mean, it's so, so vibrant. And when I can also water it, and then my ability to do watercolor helps out my acrylics a lot when it comes to knowing what happens when I put down a little wash of water and I apply pigment into that into that surface. So you can go right in there. And nice thing about um, in 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 classroom um, in person classes instead of the Zoom is I'm watching you, and when you go up to Dillman's. I'm watching you, and so I can say, no, you're doing this wrong or that wrong. With it. I've, I've noticed that on Zoom, a lot of times I can't tell what you're doing because I'm seeing your smiling face and not your painting for one. And sometimes for the people that are on their painting, it's hard to tell what how much water you're using. Things like that are really tough when it comes to not in-person uh, workshops. And so we're just kind of promoting the um, workshops again because they are, um, a lot of my workshops because of the COVID had gotten canceled, but now we're trying to get you back into the classroom um, and see how much more fun it is. And it, last year was a lot of fun getting back in there. And hopefully with this on the crown, we'll get back in, you know, sooner, when, once winter's over, maybe we'll get back in. Maybe that'd be a little bit closer to being, being gone. <laughs> but even though um, they have it, we're still going to have it. Even though they were very careful, they were very careful last year. Nobody caught anything last year. And the year before, actually, the first year of COVID, we had classes up at Dillman's and it was wonderful. And we were, we were protected and that was even before the shots. And then we know, and now we have our shots. So come on up this year, you know, it's going to be great. 
So we're gonna go up here, just make this lighter and see how I'm just blending, blending, blending and trying to put a little bit of detail in there, but I don't need to. I can just get the overall color, go from a white to a yellow to thing, do that first and then just keep, oh, I just put the yellow in there, red in there. I'm just gonna try to get some pure white and just blend it. So that has to be white and just keep on blending. And blending with acrylic is harder than blending with watercolor because blending with watercolor, you don't have to do anything. Watercolor blends itself because you do a wet and a wet wash. So that's the only problem I have with acrylics, heavy acrylics, is that you have to do the blending. And you have to be real careful. You gotta blend with enough pigment. You need pigment for one. You need to have a lot of pigment. You can't, with watercolor, you just need pigment to set into the water and you get all that beautiful stuff happening. With acrylics, you have to have you know enough pigment in there and blend it, blend it together. <clears throat> Cheers, guys! <laughs> Some water. You may notice that I still have my cold. Well, actually, I think it's more allergies because I just have a stuffy nose and my eyes water once in a while. <laughs> I got a feeling it's more of the allergies than it is um, the cold now. So I'm just gonna go in here. I'm gonna actually use black. I'm gonna use black, go back with black and black and blend black back into the area. Any questions? So we're gonna go here and do orange. So the, the reason I'm spending so much time on this one part is because this is the main thing, the whole, the whole painting. Everything else is very simple. This, part, this is the part that really has to shine and has to has to be bright and really your eyes have to look at it and go, wow, it's burning my eyes, it's that bright. And so to do that, you just have to go from a, or, from a white to a yellow to an orange, and it has to be gradual, but then you also got to get some of the shapes in there. So this part is really important to make it look right, and so that's why I'm spending a little bit more time right here trying to get this to look really good. And then there's other things you can just, you know, if it doesn't matter, if it powers off a little bit or if it shadows off a little bit, this is the part that really makes everything look great. Here's a little, where's the thing going back here? I like how you can sometimes just take and smear a little bit of color on this paper too. You know, the reason we use watercolor paper um, instead of like a canvas for acrylic um, a lot of people don't realize that you can use canvas, but you, I mean, you can use paper instead of canvas. Everybody thinks that acrylic has to be done in canvas. Paper is great because it has a nice texture. Sometimes you don't have any texture. For those people that don't like texture at all, you know, paper is the great, great way to go. And it's just as, um, you know, archival as, because it's acid free as canvas is. Matter of fact, it's probably even better. They always say that uh, watercolors that are kept you know, the watercolors kept at the museums last longer than the ones that are on canvas because the canvas is like material and it can be, it can also go bad or disintegrate and stuff. So it's all about, you know, it's acid free. So don't be afraid that it's paper that you're gonna, you know, you shouldn't be using paper for acrylics. And a lot of, a lot of acrylic painters use, use the paper instead of canvases. Bob Burridge is one of them that I've worked in. Bob Burridge teaches at the at um, Zillman's. In my first video, um, <laughs> I was explaining um, everybody who works at there and uh, the owners, and I forgot Todd. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, Todd. I just I had a brain fart. <laughs> forgot your name. That's so weird. You ever do that where you just forget somebody's name that you know really well? <laughs> Uh, just, I guess, must have been in the video because I'm on, I'm online now. Okay, so now, see how bright we're making this? Look at that. That sun is brightly coming through there. So the Sue and Denny, who um, the original owners um, and, and, and creators of Dillman's uh, and their, their daughter and son, Stephanie and Scott, they also work and run a lot of things there. So if you have any questions, just text them, I mean, not text them, email them on, on their website. Get any information at dillmans.com. You know anything about anything, just let them know. 
Now I'll let you know. Let's see. Where... Now we're going to get more and more detail, you get the lights going back. And when you're, what do I use to do the drawing? You can either use a, um, I have a pencil, a chalk pencil, a charcoal pencil, a white charcoal pencil. Um, I use a lot. And um, for the students, you get to use um, transfer paper that's white. And you're just transferring the image onto the, onto the paper in my classes. So I bring that and you can get that at any art store too is it's white white transfer paper um it's not it's it's actually like also like a chalk so it, it's pretty good it's actually very good and that's number one thing about your paintings too that you have to get right is a drawing so i make sure that you get a good drawing before we get going you know it's really important to get that good drawing going i'm going to take a little bit of black and push it through here again and just blend it in with my white and then there's a bunch of there's a, the poles going down, and so you gotta get that these poles and the buildings. So they're all going through here. So people tend to like doing acrylics also because it's a little bit more forgiving sometimes. You can go back over, though you shouldn't think that way. You should think that you know you're getting the thing the good things right away, like in watercolor. You try to get the first wash and make it work, and that's great. So that's the same thing you should do be doing in in watercolor too. Is just try to get it get it in there or in acrylic. I mean. Try to get it right away. Don't try to up, keep on working it, working it, and overworking it. Just put it down, leave it. Put it down and leave it. So now let's get these cars going back here. We have a lot of bright cars. And, you know, I'm not going to know exactly which one is what. And so I'm making it up. I'm painting, painting kind of loosely. And you get the bottom of the car. And you get some of the wheels. You get the street kind of colorful. A little color in the street because a lot of the colors are going to be red because no matter what color this is this sun is so bright it's making things red and and yellow and and it's all coming from there and it's lighting up as it comes out and darkening as it goes towards the end over here it's going to stay dark like this and then i'll put in the little details of like the of the signs and stuff and here I put a little bit of a couple of these signs just because I wanted to have a little bit of stuff going on here. A lot of times I get tired of an area and then I just feel like I need to go somewhere else. I'm not sure how anybody does hyperrealism because I would I couldn't stay in one area that long enough to make something happen. It would drive me crazy. And so this is I got a line right here of the light. Any questions, anybody? Just please ask them. Ask away. I'm looking up every once in a while. Just the lines here. And where are we? We started at when did we start? One fifteen. Or two fifteen will be done. So still, still enough time. The sign. We're going to do the side of the sign. And so I figure everything that's dark and blue goes on this side. Actually, there's these lights, lamps over here too. We can just put those in. A little dabs for lamps. There's the lamps here, 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 here. And then we'll put we'll put in like a ooh, that's too light. I have to cover that up with white. Or with black, I mean. Now I'm doing the side of the cars. Now that's a little bit too big of a brush to sit there and do detail. So now I'm getting to my detail stage. I'm going to use my round brush and uh, use my white yellows first because again, nothing should be white except for that right there. If you came in late, uh, that's what uh, it needs to have that to make everything else look light. You need to make that part the lightest. The sun should be the white. And if you got to even put another, make it thicker. Right there has got to be pure white, and nothing else should be pure white. You can have a very light, but not pure white. There's a bunch of stuff happening there. It's kind of orangey.
A lot of this stuff I make up too. If you notice, if you don't see something, you're not quite sure what it is. I make it up because I, I can't sit there and see everything. So um, you just put the brushwork up and down, left and right, and that'll be good enough. It'll it'll read as something. It'll read as something in that area, and it doesn't have to be that important that you can make sure it's exactly the item that's there. Lost edges, I call that, and it's very important to put those in your painting. Lost edges. Like this being really light. Got my blank dirty now. It's all it's all dirty. So we have to take a time. Burns in here again. It's a little, it's definitely different than watercolor, you know, with it when you're using the acrylic. And it's also very different than using the uh, black with the black paper. I mean, it's a different kind of thing. <laughs> Not a bad thing though. It can be fun. It can be different. And I find that when I when I go out to sell my um, paintings, the ones I always go first are the ones on black. I've sold so many of them on the black. Because they're very, you know, they're very dramatic. All of my black paintings are very dramatic because you're using a lot of light lights and dark darks and you're keeping it that way because it's, you know, you're painting a lot of things that are dark. Night scenes and um, sunset scenes and all those scenes that that need, that are all really, really dark. And then you just um, put in a light lights on there, which make it actually is easier to put in those light lights. And if you're too light, like this one, you just put in it's too light, you just water it down. And then, um, and if it's too light still, wipe it out a little bit and then put black back in. Like water down your brush, put black next to it, and you identify the shape with black. You got to put away the notion that you're not allowed to use black or white when it comes to things like this, new things, new products. Because, I mean, if you don't use white on this watercolor paper and you're using watercolor, you don't get anything. You won't you won't be able to paint. <laughs> you need to use white. It's just one of those things. It's part of this new paper that I mean they never had a watercolor paper that was a watercolor paper. Yes, they've had the black paper in general, black paper. They've had that, but not black watercolor paper that's sized. This paper is sized in and out, surface and interior, and it's hundred percent cotton. It's just like a regular really um premium watercolor paper, but it's black. There's only one other company, some claim that they have watercolor paper, but it's not sized right, or it's not literally the size at all. Um, so you have to watch what you're getting. Stonehenge right now is the only one that has all the surface. And there's a one by um, Shizen, I think it's Shizen paper. They make a white paper that is really rough. But this, I've tried the, that paper. Oh my god, it's so hard to work on because it's like I don't know what their sizing is weird or something, or I'm not sure. But I just had a really hard time working with the white paper. So if they're white paper like that, I wonder how the black paper is. I think it's a paper made in India, but this is really high quality, very um, a lot less expensive than the um, other papers. The premium paper. It's a premium paper. With a discount price, they're very, uh, very well priced for the um, high quality that they are. That was their goal, though. That was the main goal of making this paper, the the Stonehenge Aqua. There's, there's the Stonehenge Aqua Black and Stonehenge Aqua White. Gosh, I'm going and making all my colors dirty. See how it's coming together? It's just um, we're gonna give this guy a little color here. Let me give him a red top here. I think it's going around him. Here's some blue jeans down here. You don't need to notice that, do you? But there'll be like little blue jeans there. I can put the edges of them. I can make a little blue on the edges. And I can put a little bright red on the corner on his, on his top and the top of his head. Anybody got any questions? Let me know. Let me know questions. Now here we have the L going across this area. 
it's going to go across the sun, but it gets burnt out. At a certain point, it gets burnt out, and you don't see it, right? Because the sun is so vibrant, it it's called optical. What did I call it before? <laughs> Scattered optical scatter. Optical scatter, and that's something made up by Carl Bretsky, an oil painter, a plain air oil painter, who I took a class from, and um, super, super class. And he um, he taught me about that optical scatter. Because look at the sun, it's so bright, it just deadens that and makes it go away, like you can't see it. So you, you, you put a couple of hints of it in there and then just go away from that. Make sure you make that spot really vibrant and what light. Make this more orange. Just keep on lightening it. Make it really nice and light right where it hits the sun. Like it's being... You know, it, looks, it looks pretty bright now. I notice that there's not a yellow in the street here. So just rub a little yellow in there. You know, make whatever the sun is shooting out towards the other parts, you know, put it in there. Question, guys, give me questions. Again, uh, it could be about even um, Dillman's or anything. What the weather's like out here. <laughs> I'll tell you, it's not that great right now. It will be tomorrow, probably, I'm sure. Yesterday and the day before, we had unbelievably great weather. Oh my gosh, it was so beautiful yesterday. So we're just getting some nice bright colors here again. And going from that point down, just moving out. Now we're going to get these little dots in the little. And how do you do a dot? You dot it. Just go like that. There's no trick. No trick to that. <laughs> Excuse me. I need a little drink of water. Now this this um the light pole going across here. <clears throat> so we keep it going. Um, see how I'm putting um it back into this area. I'm going to turn off the sound just for a second because I got a call. All right, I'm back. That was a long pause. Didn't want you to hear that. Let me get a cough drop for a second. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Just got to get a cough drop. Right back. Um. <laughs>
Okay, that was fun. <laughs> a little bit of a cough attack there. Do you ever get that tickling in your throat and you can't get rid of it? Well, that's what just happened. Well, I'm back. I got the cough drop. Let me see how this goes. <laughs> so we're getting pretty close anyways. And so we're going to do the dots now, like I was saying, to get the dots in there. And yes, I just was reading your um, comments. Um, that I will repeat the orange <laughs> elsewhere. Like on the edge of the... And also on his top of his shoulders, you want to put a little bit of that in there. And so we're just going to do all this little stuff now. All these little things that make everything look like what they are. Like here's the lamp, the lamps on the post. We'll get the little thing going this way. Repeat that orange again. All these little dots on the marquee here. Uh, and this is a Chicago marquee. Um, one of the, I forgot which one this is. I think this is Oriental Theater when it's Chicago. And like the lines in the street. We'll do that. The lights, uh, the tail lights, and we'll make them a little bit brighter. We'll put the little dots. And this looks like, I'm not sure what this is. This looks like a, a bunch of stuff happening over here. I'm not sure what it is. So I'm just going to put left and right objects. <laughs> like if you don't know what something is, that doesn't really matter that much. Just go in there, put it in there. And I mean, it, it, it's not that important that everything has to look exactly. There's so much stuff going on there. You don't have to get everything exactly right. If you're doing some hyper realism, yes, you have to do that all exactly the way it is. But mine is pretty um, impressionistic, so I don't have to get ex exactly everything there. Yeah. Yes, we are all fighting this kind of cold or flu. Yeah, I've been fighting now for uh, last last week. It's a, this is it's a, this week. It's almost gone away, but every once in a while I get that little tickle in your throat, and especially when you talk like all day, like I've just been doing all day here now. All right, it looks like it's all, all good now. Got my cough drop, so we're good. Now, do I want to put in the lettering? No, I'm not going to put any lettering in. I'm going to keep it looking like um, it's just, uh, just more of an impression of lettering and stuff. I don't want to put all this stuff in there because then if you start putting words and stuff, then that's what you're going to see first. So I don't want to do that. <clears throat> I'm going to put hits of red right here on the edges. Always, you know, close to here, you can put these nice hits of red and and also um, outline it with a little bit of light because it'll, it'll be like on the edge, rim lighting. And there's a rim lighting here and there. There we go. Now the first first cough attack on live. <laughs> live. <laughs> now what can you do? And so we're going to go from here now and use my brush. And instead of doing all the dots here and the words, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a really fast brush across it go like this and just make it <clears throat> a gradation. And then, because um, sometimes that looks better than a bunch of little dots dripping, dripping things all over. I think we're almost done. I'm just going to do a few more things here. I'll we'll put um, a little bit of bright, brightness over there. Maybe I'll put a couple of little things going down. Pull here. There's a pull here. And then the brightness on the back of their back of these cars is so cool. They get that brightness hitting right in the air. It's an, it's neat how the blue and these colors really work well when they're somewhere else. Like if I had this blue, I'll put it on the back here. So everything in the foreground here can be that this blue and this light blue and this dark blue. And that says then that that's in this area. Anything that's in the front area here should be that color. And then you, it just gives you that great look. And maybe put it on the floor here. That'll just make everything come together as one. Then I do. It's a kind of a little trick that if you want things to look together, like they're all work together. 
I'm just going to go there in front of this building. Okay, and the side. Um, you could put like the edges of the wheel things and maybe even a little hint of the wheel shining a little bit. It's all just little gestures of things. You don't want to, you don't want to identify all those things. You just want to like a little bit of a, it's like, yep, you can put a little bit of that just to make it look like it, there's something there. There's a few here. Put the red awning here, maybe. All right, I think we're close to done, guys. Oh, there's going to be two people walking the street. That's the last thing. So I'm going to do a little bit of the person right here. Have them walking down the street. And there you go. And a little shadow. Actually, they should be red, right? They should be very orange there because are red there because they're they're all they're really close to the sun so we're going to make them a little bit more and then we're going to put a little reflection a little shadow going beyond them let's see what it looks like in my screen and um i think we're good to go i could i don't have the airbrush with me but a lot of times what you can do with an airbrush is if you need those little those like really smooth looking glow of a sun you can do that or make it like what i have right now where it's more painterly you know it's all it's all good you just saw one more thing here on the edge of this i love these cars i, I i'm one thing about I, i'm a guy and i definitely love painting cars and cars my dad was a mechanic and uh, I grew up with a lot of cars. I used to work on cars myself, so I used to always draw monster trucks and stuff. So it's fun um, to put cars in, in a scene. I know a lot of times in my classes, a lot of the women don't like to put big cars in. So they have me put them in. And I have no problem with that. But I love doing them. All right, so I think that's about it. I just saw the poles are here on these. On here. Okay, that's it, guys. Well, thanks for stopping by. Sorry for the cough attack. <laughs> um, I'm I'm glad that we could still do these, even though we didn't do them at the art uh, at the art center in Marco Island. But uh, we got them done. And any more questions you have on this, um, put it in your comments. Ask away in the comments. We'll probably take these and put them on on the Dillman's website, and maybe the um, Marco Island will put them on their site, just so that um, we can just um, again promote Dillman's and come on up, come on up north in the summer and in the spring and in the fall. And I do too. So you can either do the spring or the fall or do both. All right. So have fun and we will see you the next um, demonstration I'm doing. Should have been in Tampa, but I will do one and just follow my page and I'll do one that we were going to do in Tampa. We'll do one one weekend. All right. So until next time.